I wanted to make a quick video about joining objects in Blender. At the same time, expose a little hidden Easter egg that is tucked away in D3 Splint. So it's called a composite attachment. And it's basically a rectangular prism that you can then adjust a lot of the parameters on. So here's the default, this little kind of trapezoidal looking thing. But right after you make it, you can adjust all these different parameters. So um, I and G are envisioning an incisal and gingival width. Um, they are reverse in this case because it has no it has no knowledge of the tooth underneath it. Um, you can also change the height on both ends. You can change the length, which I'm calling the incisal gingival distance. And then we can also give positive or negative bevel to the each of the ends, also to each of the sides. So you can make any shape you want here by messing around with with these parameters. Okay, and then finally this is kind of cool. If you want to make a thinner and longer object, you can then warp it in either direction. Okay, so that is a brief introduction to controlling the shape of this thing. So let me make it look reasonable. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is make sure this object is well intersected with the model here. Now I'm going to select the object that I want to join this attachment to. So you can left click it there to select it. And in this little blue wrench panel here, this is the modifiers panel. We're going to add a modifier and add a Boolean modifier. We're going to have a union of these two objects. And the composite button is the only button in the, the only object in the scene. But what we could do is use this little dropper and then left click on the object we want to join it to. You'll see it'll get this little sparkly look, and that's because the composite button is now joined in there. Um, but leaving a copy of the original object. Okay, and then if you want to keep that, if it if it if it worked, like if it's successful, great. If it's not, you can turn off this modifier temporarily, move this around. Not that this makes any sense, but. Modify you know, how you have it positioned, come back to the upper jaw, and turn the modifier back on. And so in that way, that allows you to preview the result, go back and make changes, and then come back and confirm. So when you have it exactly like you like it, you can apply. And now these two objects are permanently joined. You know, this has actually modified the data um, of the original object. So Blender's um, Boolean system works a little differently because it's meant to be more um, dynamic, more, more animation based. So we're going to only let 
I'm only going to draw the outside bounding box of this circle, this um, sphere, and then add a Boolean modifier, subtracting that sphere from the cube. Okay, so the sphere is here, it's just invisible, and so by keeping it, by keeping um, the modifier live, meaning it's here, it hasn't been applied, it allows you to have this be more dynamic. So this is fine as long as the objects are simple and it doesn't take 10 seconds to process that modifier. Like in this case, it's it's so fast it's happening in real time. So that's kind of the difference of Blender's modifier system versus um, Boolean unions and stuff in Mesh Mixer. Um, it's a little more geared towards animation, but when you do heavier intersections of bigger objects, it doesn't work as well. Um, keeping it live like this, it does work fine as long as you add the modifier, and then apply it.